it is issued to prevent a lower court or tribunal from exceeding its jurisdiction so when a court or tribunal uh, good morning students welcome back to plutus ias so we have entered the fourth day of our 95 days prelims challenge so the topic today we are going to discuss is uh, fundamental rights so this is not only important in our day to day life but it is also also very important for uh, examination from the point of view of uh, upsc examination so uh, we will uh, try to see in some detail about the fundamental rights in today's lecture first i will discuss the salient uh, salient features of fundamental rights next i will uh, discuss the six fundamental rights that are mentioned in the constitution next i will explain each and every individual article which is four and whether any limitations are there for that particular article in the constitution later uh, we will see some important judgments where the fundamental rights were a contention and uh, in the last i will discuss some multiple choice questions that are asked in the uh, previous examinations so without wasting uh, any uh, further time we will go and discuss uh, the salient features of the fundamental rights so the first feature is the fundamental rights are integral constitutional uh, status they have integral constitutional status that means the fundamental rights are part and parcel of the uh, constitution so they are integral part of the constitution safeguarded against ordinary legislation so when an ordinary law has been made so the fundamental rights will be over and above those ordinary laws so any law similarly any law that is in conflict with the fundamental rights that will be uh, treated or declared as null and void the second feature of fundamental rights is the fundamental rights are elaborate and detailed so the rights in part 3 are detailed each article defining its scope and limitation so basically the rights are uh, put in in an expanded way right similarly the third feature is rights are not absolute they are qualified rights so what uh, uh, does this mean it means the fundamental rights are not absolute there are certain limitations upon these fundamental rights so they are subjected to reasonable restrictions right for example uh, exceptions apply during emergencies means they can be withdrawn during emergencies right right the other feature is they are enforceable through judiciary so this feature is called as justiciability so fundamental rights are justiciable means citizens can approach supreme court or high courts also for the protection of their fundamental rights means so the fundamental fundamental rights are justiciable and they can be enforced in a court of law right similarly another feature is amendable in nature so the fundamental rights can be amended through article 368 which is mentioned in the constitution right the parliament can amend the fundamental right but it is subjected to one condition the uh, the amendment it should not alter the basic nature of the fundamental rights so this is given in the case one and the case one and the bharati case a basic structure doctrine has been uh, propounded there so the the parliament can amend the fundamental rights but it should not change the fundamental nature of the uh, rights right next is provision for rights suspension so the fundamental uh, rights can be suspended during the emergencies especially during the national emergency so what article 358 says is uh, once the national emergency is declared each of the fundamental right that is mentioned in the article 19 basically 
six freedoms are given through the article 19 so automatically these six breed freedoms will be withdrawn once the national emergency is imposed exception is article 20 and 21 which says uh, which pro protects the rights of the convicted persons and uh, the right to life and personal liberty these rights cannot be withdrawn even during the national emergency so this provision has been incorporated through the 44th constitutional amendment that was made in 1978 so please try to remember this is an important exception right similarly the fundamental rights have special minority rights which means uh, some special rights of minorities have been protected through the fundamental rights so those rights are uh, educational and cultural and educational rights so uh, similarly untouchability un untouchability is also prohibited and criminalized under article 17 right additional safeguards for women children and weaker sections are made uh, in the fundamental rights so basically these protections are uh, kept under article 15 subclass 5 right another important feature of fundamental rights is no recognition of natural rights so we uh, we all know there will be natural rights for uh, human beings however these natural rights have not been kept in the list of fundamental rights right similarly another important feature is uh, pro uh, right to property made as a legal right so earlier the right to property it's it was mentioned in the uh, fundamental list of fundamental rights later uh, through the same uh, constitutional amendment uh, act 44th constitutional amendment it was removed through uh, from the list of fundamental rights and made as a legal right under article 300a so please try to remember this point also it has been already asked in the examination now we will see the six fundamental rights broadly what are the rights promised through this list of six fundamental rights the first one is right to equality articles covered are article 14 to 18 so basically what this right to equality says is no person can be discriminated against religion race caste sex or place of birth so there shall not be any discrimination based on these aspects right it also include it includes provisions like equal as access to public places right equality of opportunity in matters of employment this is mentioned in article 16 and the abolition of untouchability this is mentioned in article 17 right next right is right to freedom so articles covered are article 19 to article 22 so the rights covered here are right to uh, articles like uh, 19 19 to 22 are covering these rights so some of the rights guaranteed are right to speech right to assembly right right for association movement residence and profession right similarly uh, reasonable restrictions are mentioned in the article 19 subclass 2 uh, earlier we have seen that the fundamental rights are not absolute they are subjected to reasonable restrictions so some of those restrictions are mentioned in the article 92 right the third right is right against exploitation so articles covered here are article 23 and 24 so some of the rights mentioned here are it prohibits the employment of children below below the age of 14 years in certain areas areas like factories mines and other hazardous places so children are prohibited from employing in these places right the other right is the next right is a right to freedom of religion the articles covering these rights are article 25 to 28 so here freedom of conscience has been provided uh, the people have 
right to freely profess practice and propagate religion they all they also ensure these rights also ensure equality of all religions before law similarly uh, in preamble while discussing the preamble we have seen that this is i mean india also has the feature of secularism so the feature of secularism is being reflected here so equality of all religions before law this is also the feature of secularism also this provision prohibits the religious discrimination so there shall be no religious discrimination the next right fifth right is a cultural and educational rights so these are covered under article 29 and article 30 rights uh, the rights safeguard the rights of minorities to conserve their language script or culture and provide with them the right to establish and administer their own educational institutions so try to remember the words they may asked in the prelims examination the final and important right is right to constitutional remedies that is covered under article 32 so this fundamental right empowers individuals to move to supreme court whenever their rights are violated so uh the supreme court can issue writs uh basically the honorable supreme court and also high court can issue writs to enforce the fundamental rights of citizens so basically there are five types of writs which can be uh, which can be uh, issued by the judiciary so in the later part of this lecture we will see what are those five writs So this is the broad introduction of the fundamental rights six fundamental rights now we will see in detail in some detail each of the article which is promising fundamental rights to citizens right first one is article 14 equality of equality before law so basically this article article 14 ensures equality before law and equal protection of laws please try to remember these two phrases these are very very important when we discuss the mains we will discuss what exactly these two phrases mean uh, in detail and we will do some analysis for the time being please remember that two rights i mean two equalities are given under article 14 one is equality before law and the next one is equal protection of laws right the scope of this article is it applies to all persons uh whether they are citizens or non citizens means which means it is available to foreigners also when foreigners come uh, come to india this right will be applicable to uh, them also only exception is it is not available to enemy nation citizens for example uh people coming from we can say pakistan so apart from these people it is available to citizens and non citizens right right next article is article 15 it is about prohibition of discrimination so any person cannot be any person cannot be discrimination only on the grounds of religion race caste sex and place of birth right it also applies to all citizens within indian territory so this is make sure that this is not available to or not available to non citizens right <coughs> it applies to only citizens ensures that no person is discrimin uh, discriminated against this matters mentioned in the article so no person is uh, discriminated in going to public places use public resources or admission into educational institutions 
So this article has one exception, one limitation. So special provisions can be made for women, children to enable affirmative action. Affirmative action means reservations. for the advancement. Uh, try to remember recently one more article has been added to this article 15 to make sure uh, reservations for the economically weaker sections. So this is also one exception mentioned in this article. Right. Another article is equality of opportunity in public employment. That is article uh, guaranteed to article 16. So it, it ensures equality of opportunity in matters of public employment to all citizens, right? It also applies to all citizens. It is not applied to non citizens, means it is not available to foreigners, right? Similarly, it permits the state to make reservations in public employment in favor of any backward class, right? OBC. Backward class means OBC. Citizens not adequately represented in the services under the state. Similarly, Article 16.6 has been included to enable the reservations for economically weaker sections. Please try to remember this point also. So, reservations can be provided for backward classes and economically weaker sections. This is the exception. Next important article is uh, Article 17. Abolition of untouchability. So it abolishes the practice of untouchability in any form. Right. So all forms of untouchability are abolished through this article. So based on this article, the Protection of Civil Rights Act. Protection of Civil Rights. has been brought to enable this provision, right? Next article is abolition of titles. So, abolishes titles except military and academic distinctions. So, it applies to all citizens, prohibiting the state from conferring titles of nobility. So, before independence, there were uh, many titles like patwaris, etc., etc., giving, creating a hierarchy in the society. So, to remove uh, that, that kind of hierarchy in the society and to create a society which is equal, these kind of titles have been abolished. But there is an exception. For example, military, uh, mil military uh, titles like uh, Veer Chakra, Param, Param Veer Chakra, these kind of titles can be given and civilian awards like Padma Sri, Like Padma Bhushan, so Padma Awards and Bharat Ratna, these are, these are exceptions. These awards can be conferred on the citizens. Right. Next, very important article, Article 19, protection of certain rights regarding freedom of speech, etc. So, basically, the Article 19 guarantees six freedoms to citizens. It guarantees six freedoms. So, we will see what are the six freedoms that are granted to citizens? First one is Article 19.1a, freedom of speech and expression. So the citizens have right to express their thoughts, opinions and ideas freely through speech and expression. So the right of right of press, the right to establish press and publish news also uh, integral to this right. right. There are limitations, certain uh, reasonable restrictions can be imposed on the ground such as sovereignty and integrity of India, security of state, friendly relations with foreign states, public order, decency and morality. So these are the reasonable restrictions imposed upon the right of uh, freedom of speech and expression. The second right is freedom to assemble peacefully. This is mentioned in Article 19.1b. So the limitations are reasonable restrictions can be imposed uh, for public order, 
and the sovereignty and integrity of India. The third freedom is form of uh, to form associations and unions. Right. The restrictions uh, can uh, can be applicable here are interest of public order and morality. So based on these uh, limitations, uh, restricts uh, kind of restrictions can be imposed on this right. Right. Next right is freedom to move through uh, freely through throughout the territory of India. This is given in the Article 191D. So there are lim uh, limitations. So to protect the interest of the tribals. Because tribal, uh, tribals are very much vulnerable. Uh, the people from mainland can enter into tribals. and There is a chance of tribals being exploited. So there are some restrictions imposed on this right. right. Restrictions may be imposed for the general public for entry and the protection of the interest of scheduled tribe people. So this is the only reasonable restriction imposed on this right. Right. Freedom to reside and settle any in any part part of the territory of India. This is guaranteed in Article 191E. So citizens have the right to reside and settle in any part of India. Some of the reasonable restrictions imposed here are uh, general public uh, are prohibited from entering into tribal areas. Same uh, restrict restriction related to the above right also applies here. From Citizens are prohibited from entering into certain scheduled areas and settling there. Next and final freedom is freedom of profession, occupation, trade and trade or business. So this is basically mentioned in Article 19.1 G. So the limitations are uh, reasonable restrictions can be imposed in the interest of the general public or for the protection of the interest of any scheduled tribes. This is also, this is one of the reasonable restriction imposed on this particular freedom. Right. Okay. These are the six freedoms that are guaranteed through the Article 19. Right. Article 20. Protection of protection in respect of convicted, conviction for offenses. So basically, rights of the convicted persons are guaranteed through this article. Right. Key provision is provides protection against ex post facto means the crime has been committed now, but the, the crime, the particular act has been declared as crime in the future. So there will be no punishment. The, the, a particular person cannot be punished for that kind of crime. So basically that right has been guaranteed through this article. So the rights protected are protection against ex post facto laws and double geopardy. Double geopardy means a person cannot be uh, punished twice for the same crime committed. So this, this is the meaning of double geopardy. So try to remember these two rights provided under this article. Right, uh, protection against ex post facto laws and protection against double geopardy. Right, it applies to all persons, citizens and non-citizens. Right. No person shall be convicted for any offense except for violation of a law in force at the time of the commission of the act charged as an offense. So, ex post facto law means this one. Right. Also, similarly, a person can be punished. Uh, uh, no, no person shall be punished twice for the same offense committed only once. Next one is very, very important article, Article 21, Protection of Life and Personal Liberty. So it guarantees the right to life and personal liberty to all persons. So it also applies to citizens and non-citizens. So there is no lim uh, limitation uh, particularly mentioned about this article in the article itself. Next one, next one is Article 21A, so right to education. Uh, earlier in the original constitution, it was not there. It was added through Constitutional Amendment Act. So try to remember. So through this uh, uh, right only, the Right to Education Act has come. And children between 6 and 14 years have been guaranteed 
with the right to elementary education. Right. So it applies to all children within the specified age group of 6 to 14 years. Right to ensuring them right to elementary education. Next, uh, Article 22, protection against arre arrest and de uh, detection. Basically, we call this as uh, preventive uh, deten uh, detention acts. So protect the uh, arbitrary arrest and the det detention of the persons. Uh, some rights have been given through the Article 22. So it applies to all persons, both citizens and non-citizens, ensuring safeguards against arbitrary arbitrary arrest and detention so the limitation is important limitation is there in this so pre preventive detention under specific circumstances subjected to cer uh, certain pro procedural safeguards so there are actually pd acts so pd acts are there so these pd acts allow uh, for arrest and detention of certain people when the authorities feel that that particular person may cause disturbance in law and order. So there is actually a lot of criticism against this uh, PD Acts. When we discuss the main topics, we will go in. Uh, we will go into uh, some detail, and we will discuss these PD Acts, PD Acts in some more detail. Next article is Article Twenty Three: Prohibition of trafficking in human beings and forced labor. So it prohibits the trafficking of human beings and forced labor. Uh, remember, forced labor was very frequent and very, uh, I mean, rampant in pre-independent India. Before independence, forced labor was very rampant. Right. So to protect from people from forced labor, this right has been incorporated. Right, it applies to all persons, including citizens and the non-citizens within Indian territory. Right, so there is no explicit, uh, ex explicit limitation is mentioned in the article. Right, next one is Article Twenty Four, prohibition of employment of children in factories, etc. So it prohibits the employment of children below below the age of fourteen years in factories, mines, or any other uh, hazardous employment so earlier child labor was pre very much uh, predominant actually even now also this is one of the major social problems uh, our country is uh, facing there are several several millions of children still working as child labor we have a uh, uh, particular law for this one also prevention of child labor act uh, prevention or prohibition of child labor act but still we have uh, brought the law also but uh, we are unable to uh, i mean abolish or eliminate this particular problem a lot of work needs to be still needs to be done in this area right article 25 article is freedom of conscience and uh, and free profession practice and the propagation of religion so basically this is the right to religion it gar guarantees individual freedom of conscience and right to freely profess practice and to propagate religion please try to remember this keywords these words may be lifted and asked in the uh, questions they may be they can be made as a point in the prelims question right it applies to all persons including citizens and uh, non citizens so basically the right to religion is subjected to public order morality and health allowing the state to regulate the secular activities associated with religious practices so the state can interfere to regulate the secular activities for example within the religion the state tries to uh, ensure the equality of people equality of people so equality shall not be violated within the religion. Similarly, uh, if we take the example of TTD, Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanam, 
a person appointed to oversee the administrative activities. So the person is basically an IAS officer. He is appointed from the Indian Administrative Service. So to act, uh, to address, to oversee the secular activities, the state, the state can interfere in the religious affairs. So this is the one limitation or one exception. Next one is Article 26, Freedom of Freedom to Manage Religious Affairs. So it grants the uh, religious denominations or to sections thereof the right to establish and maintain institutions for religious and charitable purposes. Manage their own affairs, matters of religion, and own and acquire movable and immovable property. So a person can uh, donate money for establishment and running of educational institutions. Right. So it basically gives the autonomy in managing religious institutions and affairs to a particular people who are hailing from that particular religion. The next is Article 27, freedom as to payment of taxes for promotion of any particular religion. So uh, it, the article prohibits a uh, state from levying taxes for the money donated for the promotion of any particular religion. So if a person uh, donates some money for the promotion of any particular religion, the state cannot impose tax on that donations. So this right is given in this particular article. Right, this article applies to all persons and uh, there are no particular uh, limitations are put within the article itself. The next right is Article 28, freedom from attending religious instruction or religious worship in certain educational institutions. Right, so it uh, the article provides that no religious instruction shall be provided in any educational institution only maintained out of state funds and no person attending such institution shall be required to take part in any religious instruction or worship. So this is basically the right promised through this article. Right, No particular limitation is mentioned in this article. The next article is Article 29, Protection of Interest of Minorities. So protects the, basically the article protects the, protects the rights of the minorities to conserve their language, script and culture. So it applies to all religious and linguistic minorities, ensuring their right to preserve and promote distinct, distinct cultural identity. So remember, the constitution recognizes only two types of minorities. One is religious minorities and the other one is linguistic minorities. Remember, there is a one more minority, cultural minority. Right? But the constitution has not recognized this minority uh, in the, uh, I mean, as a minority. So try to remember, there are multiple demands that this cultural minority also recognize as one of the minorities, but till now, this has not been recognized. Right. The next, uh, next one is Article 30, right of minorities to establish and administer their own educational institutions. So it grants the religious and linguistic minorities the right to establish and administer educational institu institutions of their own choice. So it applies to all religious and linguistic minorities. Similarly, here the cultural minorities are not recognized. Right. Here one uh, limitation or one exception is there. The state can regulate educational institutions established by minorities for maintaining standards of education. So basically this is very, very important. So to maintain the standards of education, the state can interfere here. The next article, very important article, and the last article, Article 32, right to, right to constitutional remedies. So without this article, the five fundamental rights which are guaranteed, they have no value. But if they are violated, we have Article 32, which guarantees the remedy. I mean, if those rights are violated, 
we can have a remedy by moving to courts of law by moving to supreme court or high court we can ask the judiciary to enforce those laws so in this way this law uh, this provision becomes very very uh, important because of this reason dr b r ambedkar called this as call this as heart and soul of the constitution so please remember this phrase heart and soul of the constitution this uh, this has been said by dr b r ambedkar so basically the act the provision enables the enforcement of fundamental rights guaranteed in the article 3 of the constitution right this applies to all citizens in cases in some cases it applies to non citizens also ensuring access to justice and the protection of their fundamental rights so earlier i said the supreme court and the high court can issue writs to enforce the fundamental right if any person's fundamental rights are violated basically there are five writs those are habeas corpus so habeas corpus basically means produce the body right so this writ is issued to protect an individual's personal liberty by ensuring they are not unlawfully detained so this works against unlawful detention of persons next is mandamus so to compel the authorities to perform their uh, duties so if a person is not acting upon not acting according to his duty or he is not fulfilling his uh, uh, duties the court can issue the writ of mandamus mandamus basically means we are ordering we are ordering so basically any public authority any government officer if he is not performing his duty this writ is being issued and the third writ is prohibition right it is issued to prevent a lower court or tribunal from exceeding its jurisdiction so when a court or tribunal exceeds its jurisdiction and uh, order something so this uh, writ prohibition is Ordered or issued. Sir, next is certiorari. So, is it is issued to quash the decisions of lower courts or tribunals that are ultra vires or beyond their authority. So, certiorari is issued when a lower court or tribunal orders a judgment which is ultra vires. Ultra vires means out of the law. I mean, uh, or not according to the law or beyond their authority this particular writ is issued next is quo warranto quo warranto means what what authority right it is issued to inquire into the legality of a person holding a public office so quo warranto writ is issued this particular phrase means at what authority right so basically these are the five writs that uh, the supreme court or high court can issue to enforce the fundamental rights of the citizens uh now we will see some important judgments in which the fundamental rights are a uh, i mean contention the first one is ak ak gopalan versus state of madras uh it was uh, it happened in the, during 1980s so ak gopalan communist leader was detained under the preventive detention act of 1950 so i was mentioning in article 22 uh, it protects uh, i mean uh, detention of persons but there are pd acts person can be detained under the pd acts so ak gopalan was detained under the act and uh, he challenged that act right here the validity constitutional validity of the preventive uh, detention acts has been questioned through this act here the court uh, interpreted uh, narrowly interpreted the article 21 that is right to life and personal liberty stating that only safeguards against arbitrary and executive action can be 
uh, prevented, but not the legislative action. So what the court opined is any arbitrary action of the government officials or the government can be restricted, but not the legislative action. So in this way, the Honorable Supreme Court has interpreted Article 21 very narrowly. The next one is Golaknath versus State of Punjab. This has happened in 1967. This is also a very famous case. Right. Here, the Article 13.2 was interpreted. <coughs> right. So here, uh, the Honorable Supreme Court opined that the Parliament cannot amend any part of the Constitution, including fundamental rights. Here, the judgment was a parliament did not have any power to amend the fundamental, fundamental rights, including the right to property under Article 369. Further, it said that if parliament wants to amend the constitution, a new constituent assembly, assembly has to be formed and that particular body, that particular constituent assembly can amend the constitution. So, as we can understand, this is kind of extreme judgment. Judgment. And uh, we can see this particular judgment has been overturned in the next uh, important judgment, that is Keshwan and the Bharati case. Right. Very, very important uh, judgment in the uh, incorporating the fundamental rights that is Keshwan and the Bharati case. Uh, here, the doctrine of base doctrine of basic structure, basic structure has been given. Here, it is said that uh, here basically the contention was validity of 24th, 25th, and uh, 29th constitutional amendments has been. Examined. So here, these uh, particular amendments they sought to uh, curtail or reduce the judicial power, ju judicial review power of the uh, Supreme Court. Right. It basically tried to curtail the judicial re uh, review power of the uh, Supreme Court. Basically, uh, the Honorable uh, High Court said that the Parliament has the right to. So, the parliament has the right to amend any part of the constitution, including fundamental rights. Rights. Okay. The parliament has the right to amend any part of the constitution, including the fundamental rights. But it said it cannot alter the basic structure of the constitution. So, further, the court said that the power of judicial re review. It is part of the basic structure. So, the judicial review power of the judiciary cannot be taken away by the constitutional amendment. Amendment. So, in this way, uh, the judicial review has been made as part of the basic structure doctrine. Right. The next case is Menaka Gandhi case, Manika Gandhi versus Union of India case, 1978. So, here, uh, here, the contention is Article 21. So the court addressed the issue of personal liberty and, uh, and the right to life. So, basically, here, the court interpreted Article 21 in a liberal way. Right. So, uh, we have seen in A.K. Gopalan case, uh, the court narrowly interpreted Article 21, but here, in this Manika Gandhi case, a liberal view has been taken by the Honorable Supreme Court in interpreting Article 21. Here, in this Manika Gandhi case, the uh, the, uh, the provision, the due process of law concept has been uh, incorporated by the Supreme Court. It said that if there is a law uh, existing, existence a law, existence of a law is not sufficient to restrict a person. It also uh, ensured that the particular law has been brought or enacted 
through proper process right so basically what the supreme court is saying is so any law that is depriving a person's uh, personal liberty it must be just fair and reasonable so mere existence of a law is not sufficient to curtail the freedoms of a person that particular law also should be just fair and reasonable uh, so in this way the supreme court has interpret interpreted article 21 in a much 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 liberal way right the next important case is minerva mills versus union of india case of 1980 here uh, <coughs> the court struck down 42nd amendment parts of the uh, 42nd amendment act here also in through this amendment the judicial review power of honorable supreme court has been curtailed so once again it is uh, reiterating the basic structure doctrine it said that judicial review is part and parcel of the basic structure doctrine and the parliament do not have the power to take away that power so here uh, the court opined that the particular amendments that were made to article 31c they violated the basic structure of the constitution and also abridging the power of judicial review so in this way the court opined that uh, it is not valid and uh, it reiterated the doctrine of basic structure once again right next one is mohammad ahmed khan versus shabano begum case 1985 this is also very very important case here the debate between right to equality and to right to religious freedom were the contentions so basically uh, shabano begum was given uh, talaq and she was claiming ali alimony but uh, the person particular person was uh, not uh, willing to give so basically here the article 14 right to equality and the right to religious uh, freedom were in contention so what the honorable supreme court opined that article right to religious freedom is uh, subjected to right to equality so no no person can be discriminated within the religion so there should be intra religious equality the next one is mc mehta versus union of india 1856 this is basically uh, related to environment and uh, pollution pollution and environment right so basically the supreme court held that held that right to life under article 21 also includes right to healthy environment so there was lot of pollution polluting industry industries were there surrounding the delhi so there were uh, hazardous chems, uh, chemicals and gases are be, uh, were re being uh, released from those factories basically the lawyer mc mehta he challenged uh, this aspect and he said that people of delhi have the right to a healthy and a clean environment so the honorable honorable high uh, honorable supreme court accepted this contention and said it said that article 21 the right to life also comprises right to healthy environment all right so these are some of the cases in which the fundamental rights were an important contention so as we can see first the honorable supreme court was very rigid in interpreting or elaborating the fundamental rights as the time passed by and the situation socio economic conditions of the country have uh, are changing it started inter interpreting the fundamental rights more liberally okay now we will see some previous questions that are asked in the prelims examination first first question is asked in 2023 the question is in india which of the following constitutional amendments were widely believed to be enacted to overcome the judicial interpretations of fundamental rights so basically <coughs> right basically the answer is first amendment act so this particular amendment has been brought to 
incorporate the land reforms right so immediately after the independence the government has been uh, try to uh, bring in the land reforms but many landlords were opposing these reforms they uh, they went to court and asked for nullifying these uh, laws so to overcome those challenges ninth schedule has been created and all this land reforms have been kept in the ninth schedule which is out of purview of judicial review so the first uh, the correct answer is first amendment act so what uh, the next question is it is asked in 2021 what is the position of right to property in india so the options are it is a legal right available to citizens only legal right available to any person fundamental right available to citizens only neither fundamental right nor legal right so as we all know earlier the right to property was in the list of fundamental rights but it is not it is now not a fundamental right it is a uh, legal right available to any person so the correct option is option b third question is asked in 2020 20 uh, sorry 2020 consider the following statements the constitution of india defines its basic structure in terms of federalism secularism fundamental rights and democracy the constitution of india provides for judicial review to safeguard the citizens liberties and to preserve the ideals ideals on which the constitution uh, is based so which of the statements given above is or are correct only one only two both one and two none of the above option is basically b only two see the basic structure doctrine it is not mentioned in the constitution it is not mentioned it is actually proposed by the supreme court so even now also the doctrine basic structure doctrine it is not defined elaborately i mean what it what the actually the basic structure constitutes as the time passes by time by time the honorable supreme court is putting one feature into basic structure concept so it is a concept still evolving next question is right to privacy is protected as an in, intrinsic uh, part to right to life and personal liberty which of the following in the constitution of india correctly and appropriately imply the above statement it is asked in 2018 so option is options are article 14 and the provisions under the 42nd amendment of the constitution second option is article 17 so this is about uh, untouchability so this is wrong answer article 21 and the freedoms guaranteed in the part 3 next one is article 14 so this is also not relevant so the correct answer is article 21 so under the article 21 right to life and personal liberty the right to privacy is also incorporated and implied directly so basically this has come to the aadhar judgment said that right to privacy is a the honorable supreme court opined that right to privacy is a fundamental right right so that's it for today guys see you next time mm-hmm.